Welcome everybody to our live crochet event. I'm Brenda KB Anderson and today I have a special project to share with you today. I was thinking about Mother's Day coming up um, when I designed this project. It is called the Sunshine Photo Frame and you can go ahead and download your free pattern. Um, the link is in the description um, or also in the chat box too. And um, here's what they actually look like. They're just these cute little crocheted frames for special photos that you have and that you want to hang up. Um, so I was thinking about ways to display some of my older photos that I have um, on the wall and I didn't really want, I just wanted to have really small, a bunch of really small little photos. So that's where I came up with this, this idea to kind of create this crocheted frame around, um, around the photos. So the way that these are constructed, they're made in two pieces. Um, there's a front and then a back crocheted part. So this is the back and then the front is this sort of lace and it basically starts out with a donut in the middle and then you can sort of trap your photo in between your layers um, to kind of sandwich it together. All right, so this is, of course, this is a live event. Um, I'm so excited that you guys are here, and I just wanted to remind you if you have any questions, if there was something that I said that wasn't very clear, or if you just want to add to the conversation, you want to tell me where you're crocheting from, or things that you'd like to learn in upcoming lives. I love it when people put suggestions in the chat box. Um, just let me know, and I'd love to answer your questions as we're doing this live today. All right, so the materials that you're gonna need for this project, you'll need some yarn. So I've, I've worked this up in two different sizes and actually in the pattern, I do give you know, different gauges, different hooks um, and an explanation of what exactly all these um, yarns are that I use. So this little tiny one here, this was made with a crochet thread. This is a size three crochet thread. This is what it looks like here. Um, and this is way more than enough for one. I think you can get maybe three frames out of a ball of one of these, um, one of these balls. And then if, um, if you wanted a slightly larger frame, oh, and so this one would use a C hook, which is a 2.75 millimeter hook, okay? So kind of a smallish hook. And then these two were both created with worsted weight yarn. I tried one out with a dishcloth cotton, which is what this lighter yellow one is. So this is what the yarn looks like for that. Um, and again, you can get at least a couple of frames, maybe three or so, out of, <coughs> out of uh, uh, one ball of this cotton. It's just like a uh, number four, which is a worsted weight kitchen cotton. So this would be something you could find um, in a big box store or there are um, there's a list of exactly the yarns that I use too. So if you want to find exactly the same thing, you can do that. That's in the pattern. And then this frame, the darker orange one, this one was made in a mercerized cotton. This, again, this was a worsted weight cotton yarn, um, but it was a mercerized cotton. So it's got a little bit of an extra shine to it. Um, but otherwise it's, you know, about the same weight as this yarn. And I do have specifics for that yarn in the pattern as well. So the worsted weight yarn I had used uh, an F hook, which is a 3.75 uh, millimeter hook, uh, but you can use any hook that you need to to get the size and the, the sort of feel of the fabric that you want. So, um, and what I mean by that, I do have a gauge listed for these, um, these two different weights, two different gauges listed. Um, and so you can check your gauge by working up the back of the frame, and then you can check how large that is, and then you'll know how big your, um, your frame will end up. So as long as you're getting a sturdy size, uh, you know, like a sturdy fabric and about the right size for, you know, for however big you want your photo to be, it doesn't matter if you get the exact gauge that I have listed. It's, it's okay if it's not exactly perfect. Um, but it's just, I put the gauges in there so you'd have a guideline and you know about how stiff the fabric was when I crocheted it up if you're using a similar thickness of yarn. Okay, so, um, so you'll need the yarn or crochet thread and then you'll need your hook that goes along with it. Of course, you're gonna need your special photos and I would recommend making, you know, if you have old photos, like these are old photos of my family, um, I made a, a copy of those to use in these because these are not, they're not protected with glass or anything like that. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't <laughs> using the original photos because uh, they're very special. Um, so I made copies of them first to go in here. And then you'll also need uh, some scraps of, of cardboard. So I would recommend using box board, which is that sort of thinner cardboard. This came from uh, a box of beer. 
um, or you could use a cereal box or you know basically just kind of that thinner smooth cardboard that holds up really well when you're cutting around it if you have something like this that's a corrugated cardboard and it's thicker it might work but when you're cutting around in a circle it it very well might start to get these kind of as you're cutting it might start to kind of crease and get those little lines in it that might show through your frame. So I would recommend steering clear of the thicker cardboards if you can. Um, if you have box board but you feel like it's too thin, you can certainly cut two layers of it and hold it together. I'd rather you do that instead of using a thicker cardboard if you, if you want something a little bit more sturdy. Okay, so you need cardboard and then um, you will need some sort of fabric stiffener. So what I originally had used was, this was I don't even know if you say APs or APIS, I don't know. It was a crafter's pick fabric stiffener that I've had for a while and it worked great. Um, but then I realized that this was discontinued. So <laughs> I went on a search and I found something similar and this you can buy at craft stores and you can also find it on Amazon. I put a link to it in your pattern in case you're looking for this. And this looks just exactly the same after it's dried. It is a little thicker than what I had used here. And the nice thing about this was it had this sort of squeeze top so um, that was a little bit helpful, but I'm going to show you how to do it with this because that is what I linked to in the description and I know this is readily available. So I'll show you how to thin it down just a little bit and make it work. <coughs> Another thing, um, <coughs> this is actually optional. Well, actually, <coughs> along with the fabric stiffener, you're going to need a brush. So you're going to need something that has fairy, fairly stiff bristles on it to be pushing that fabric stiffener into your crocheted fabric. Oh, let me back up and explain where the fabric stiffener goes. So when you're, when you're working with the fabric stiffener, you are only going to be putting it in these outer points. It's not going to be going in here into this little donut shape and it do, it's not on the back at all. It is only on these outer points to help them kind of stand up and be nice and stiff. All right, so you'll need the brush, the fabric stiffener, and you'll also need a piece of either wax paper or um, this is parchment paper, that works too. So you can use that as your, you know, to place it underneath when you're putting the fabric stiffener in and it won't stick to that. And then an another, um, a way to hang this, if you don't wanna use, you can, of course, you can use a little tiny nail here or even a little pin. These are extremely lightweight. Um, to hang these up, you can just, you know, hang it from one of these uh, top points. But if you don't want to do that, um, if you just want to look, want it to look like it's kind of floating, you can use a plastic yogurt lid or some kind of thin plastic like this and cut a little piece and add it to, stitch it to the back of your frame. I know it's hard to see this. I'll try to make it flash a little so you can kind of see where it is. And then you can add one of these little, um, they're picture framing strips. It's a c command strip, so it sticks to the plastic. That's why we added the plastic. And then the other half sticks to the wall, um, and then it pulls away clean from your wall. So I like to use that for these because then you can reposition them if you, you know, add some more to the collection, you need to move them around. You, you don't have to put holes in your walls so, for that. So. Um, that's just another option. All right, so looks like we don't have any questions so far, so I'm going to get started. Um, the first thing you're going to start with, oh, I forgot to mention also, you're going to need some stitch markers for working on this back piece here, just so that you don't have to do quite so much counting. You're going to actually need six stitch markers. Let's see, somewhere my other, here's my stitch markers are hiding. <coughs> okay, so you're going to need six stitch markers, five of them in one color and then one in a contrasting color so you can keep track of your beginning of the rounds. All right, so we're first gonna start working on this circular piece on the back. And so we're gonna start with, by making a magic ring or an adjustable loop. So you can just kind of draw like a little loop, a little E shape, a cursive E shape. And then you can fold that over onto the strand of yarn that is connected to the ball just flipping that over like that so it's kind of right going right through the middle and then you're going to place your hook underneath and then you can hold with your finger where everything crosses over as you tighten it a little bit but don't tighten it all the way then you're going to just do a little yarn over and a chain to kind of anchor your loop to this adjustable ring which you're going to pull tight later um, if you make your adjustable ring in a di completely different way, that's fine. Um, this is just the way that I normally do mine. It's just the way that I teach it. So you can use any kind of adjustable loop. Or if you don't like adjustable loops, you could chain three and then <coughs> do the first round of your single crochets into that um, first chain that you make. 
All right. So we're going to begin by working six single crochets into our adjustable loop. So we'll insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. There's our first single crochet. And we're going to do that five more times. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. There's two stitches. And we'll fill that in with four more. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to pull on that beginning tail and until that adjustable loop disappears and it's nice and tight. And now we are going to begin working um, in the round and we're going to place two single crochets into each stitch around. So here's our first stitch. So there's our first single crochet, one, and then we're going to place a, our contrasting marker in that very first stitch of the round so we don't get confused. <laughs> And here's the second stitch that we're working into the very same stitch. Okay, this is how we, you do an increase. So we're placing the first two stitches of the round are both made into that very first stitch of the last round. Okay, so now two stitches in each of the following five stitches. One and two and two and two, three and two, four and two, five and two. So we should have 12 stitches all the way around there. And now on the next round, we're going to work, let's see, let me check my instructions, but it'll be increases on every other stitch on the next round. So two single crochets into the next stitch and one single crochet into the following stitch. And we're gonna repeat that little sequence six times for 18 single crochets. <clears throat> All right, so we have one and two. Remembering to put that stitch marker back in. So there's our first increase. And then one in the next stitch. Two in the following stitch. One and two. One in the next stitch. Two in the following stitch. One and two. One in the following stitch. There's our increase and our stitch one in the next stitch. And when I say increase, all an increase is, that's just when you're putting two stitches into one stitch. That's all that means. Here's our last increase of the round. And then one more single crochet into the very last stitch of the round. Okay, so we've completed the first three rounds. And on number four, round number four, we're going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches and then two single crochets into the next stitch. So here's our first single crochet. One and two. And then two single crochets into the following stitch. One and two. And we're going to repeat that. One into the next stitch. One into the following stitch and then two into the next stitch. Okay, so we're repeating that one, one, two, one, one, two. And this is just uh, how you make a flat circle. So if you have your own method of making a flat circle, that's perfectly fine. You can substitute with that. Um, let's see, one and one and two. Oops, I accidentally increased there. <laughs> there we go. And one more set. One, and one, and two in the next stitch. All right, so in round five, this is where we start placing a bunch of stitch markers so we don't have to do any counting after that. Um, so we're gonna work single crochet into the next two stitches, two into the next, and then a single crochet into the following stitch. And every time we repeat that, we put a stitch marker in at the beginning of that sequence. So we're gonna work two single crochets, one replacing our marker, and then one into the next stitch. So those are the first two. Then we're gonna increase on the next one, one and two. And then we're gonna work a single crochet into the following stitch. <clears throat> now we're going to repeat that. 
So there's the first stitch of the next repeat. So we're going to place a marker in there. And then another stitch. And then we're going to do an increase in the following stitch. One and two. And then another stitch. Okay, we're going to re repeat the sequence again. Single crochet. Place our marker. Another single crochet. An increase. One and two. And then another single crochet. All right, we're going to repeat again. Single crochet. Uh, I want to say good morning to Elaine. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad that you're here. Another single crochet, and, and then an increase. One and two, and another single crochet. Single crochet, single crochet. Oops, I forgot to mark the beginning of that sequence. Two in the next, one and two, and one in the following. All right, here's the beginning of the last sequence. One, two, whoops. Increase in the next stitch, one and two, and a stitch in the following stitch. So I am using a hook that is slightly smaller than I would normally use for this thickness of yarn, and I, that's because I wanted it to be a little bit, you know, more solid and a little bit more stiff, have a little bit of stiffness. This is not going to be like, you know, if you were making a sweater or something, something to wear and you would want some kind of drape to it, you'd want to use a smaller hook than what you'd normally use for that. Okay, so you can see here, there's the red at the beginning of the round, and then there's five contrasting markers that are placed. So then on the following rounds, rounds six through 10, you're just gonna be single crocheting around, and in between each set of markers, you're gonna make one increase. So again, the increase, that just means you pick a stitch, and then you put two stitches into that stitch. So in order to make your circle look nice and round, and it doesn't start to look faceted, where you know it has kind of corners, I place my increase in a different location between stitches. So what I mean by that, um, for example, as I'm going around, let's pull this stitch marker out. We're just, remember, we're just doing single crochets and you can just pick a location to put your increases in between each set of markers. So I visualize like where I'm putting it and I put it in about the same place all the way around in between each set. And then on the next round, I pick a different place between markers so that I'm not making an increase into another increase that I made from the previous round. So if, if that was confusing, it's okay, because I'll show you what I mean. So I've made the first stitch, and then let's just say we're gonna increase on the next stitch. So in my mind, I think to myself, okay, I'm making my increases pretty close after that stitch marker, okay? So then you just continue Oops, I think I skipped a stitch there by accident. I did. So you just continue around, and here we've gotten to the next stitch marker, so we'll remove that, make a stitch in there, and remember how we made one pretty close after. Um, it was the second stitch, but it doesn't have to be in exactly the same spot, but just in your mind think it was pretty close after that stitch marker, so you'll do that pretty much right away, and then you'll crochet around to the next one. Oh, and hi to Jen Lucas. She loves this project and she can't wait, <laughs> wait to make one or 20. Yes, you're gonna be very busy, Jen. <laughs> All right, so we've made it around to the next stitch marker and then we're going to work our increase just after that first, you know, right after that stitch marker and then continue working around in the same fashion. So you're, you're just, you can just really eyeball this. It does not need to be, you don't need to make sure you put it in exactly the same place between markers each time. It's okay if you don't. But if you can kind of be consistent, then on the next round it makes it easier for you, especially if you have any trouble spotting where you put your increases. Because when you take a look at it, you can see that there are two stitches going into one stitch right there. You can see your increase, but they're not, super noticeable. I mean, it's not like it's a different color and they don't jump out at you. So if you don't want to be paying such super close attention, um, you know, just keep it in your head like, okay, this, on this round, I made it just after my stitch marker. On the next round, I made it a little further along. On the following round, I made it right in between, like right in the middle of my stitch markers. So that way you're kind of moving things around 
um, on each round. All right, so we've almost made it to the end here. And then I'll show you what I mean about um, just kind of staggering those increases on the next round. Okay, so there's our the beginning of the round. So instead of doing it right away after that stitch marker, I'm going to replace my marker. And then I'm going to continue working till it's a little towards the next stitch marker. There we go. And now we've got two stitch markers pretty close to the next one. Okay, so that way we're not putting a, an increase right on top of where the other increase is. And that just makes our circle rounder. Now this isn't absolutely essential because we are making the, the backing here. If it does turn out to be faceted, if you want to stack all of your increases directly on top of each other, that's okay. It just, if you make this into more of a smooth circle shape, it just makes the next step just a little bit easier because um, <clears throat> we're going to check and see well, we're going to make a cardboard piece that is the same as the circle. You can either trace it, um, or I'm going to show you how to do it where you kind of make your own compass um, to create those cardboard pieces. All right, so you would continue making your increases and working round 6 through 10. So right now, this is in the middle of round 7. Okay, I just stopped a little ways into round 7 here. But you would just continue making increases all the way up until you're at round 10. Um, and then you would have 60 single crochets all the way around, and it would look like this. This is what it will look like when you're finished. Um, except, of course, you'd have a bunch of extra stitch markers in there, which you can pull out at this point. Just like this. And then, um, and then at this point, then you can make your circular cardboard pieces, because you've basically created what is going to be the backing um, of your photo frame. And we're going to use that to find the size that we need to fill it up with the cardboard and how to cut our, um, it'll be the same size as uh, for cutting our photos as well. All right, so if you happen to have a compass, you know, not the Finding North kind of compass, but the drawing kind of compass, then that's pretty awesome because you can just use that, open up your compass, check the size of, you know, the radius here and then draw that right into your cardboard. But not everyone has a compass, so I want to show you my little cheater way of making circles. And this works for making circles of pretty much any size. I, I used to work in the costume, <laughs> in the costume, uh, in like a costume shop where we we're making big character costumes. And so I would make things out of foam and make things out of big rings. And a lot of times I was needing, needing a big pattern piece that was a big giant circle. And we didn't have compasses that big. So I would use this technique, but just kind of to a larger scale to create um, perfect circles. And really all you need is um, a piece of yarn and a pin and some cardboard. But I'm going to show you how to do this with a measuring tape because I think it makes it just a little bit easier. So what I do is I take a piece of yarn or string or something that is not going to stretch. Okay, so this is that mercerized cotton. It really doesn't have much stretch. Really, any of the, the yarns I recommended for this project would work for this. You just want to make yourself a little tiny loop at the end of your measuring tape, if you have a measuring tape. Um, or you could use a ribbon or something like that. And I'm just going to use a little piece of tape to make it stick. So you just want a little tiny bit of the tape or of the loop sticking out big enough to put your pencil into. And then you can use a push pin, or if you don't have a push pin, you can use a quilter's pin or something else. I like using a push pin because it really secures this tape and will keep it from sliding up on the pin, but um, you can experiment. I, I have used all kinds of different things for this. <laughs> I've definitely used quilter's pins before and it works fine. All right, so then we're gonna take the circle that we made and we are gonna find the center of the circle. So if you just look at your crochet right in the middle, that's the very center. So that is going to be the center of the circle we want to draw, okay, because your radius will go from the center to the outside. So we're going to lay this, this loop right here. This is where we want to draw the outside edge of our circle. And then we just have to 
put a pin right at the center of this tape. So I'm moving it to the side so you can see the center of the, of the crocheted piece, but I'm gonna set it right on top of that and right about <laughs> where that little tiny hole is, because I've done this before, um, that's where you're gonna push your pin. Okay, so your pin would go right at the center of your crocheted circle, and then if you kind of pull this out taut, that should go right to the outside of your crocheted circle, okay? So that's how you figure out how, how to make the, the radius. So then um, you can just place, let me get this out of the way here. You can just place that in the middle of your cardboard piece. And I'm using a piece of this thicker corrugated cardboard underneath it to kind of catch the tip of my pin. And then you just place your, your pencil in. Hopefully you guys can see this line, make it darker but you're just kind of sliding it around in a circle like that because it's holding it taut. You're, you're getting a, a uniform radius just like that. So, um, and then, so you're gonna create two circles of cardboard. So you'll have one that goes behind your photo and that keeps the back nice and stiff. And then you're gonna have one that you are gonna make into a donut shape, okay? So it's gonna go inside here. So that's the same outer dimensions. It's the same, um, same radius, same diameter, same circumference and everything on the outside, but we're just going to be cutting out a donut shaped hole from the inside. So in order to do that, we will just find, we'll place this back in here. I got to make sure that this is actually the center of my circle because there's two holes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So in order to make our line about here, we will, we can, you could just eyeball this too. And the pattern I tell you to make this thickness right from here to the inner circle, about a half an inch for the larger, for a larger frame, like one of these, and then about three eighths of an inch for this, just to kind of keep it proportional. Um, but it doesn't matter if it's exact. It, it's okay if it's not exact. <clears throat> All right, so. In order to do that, all you need to do is you need to move your pin, your pin over towards the tip, however much you want that thickness to be. So say I wanted that to be a half an inch thick. And right now my pin is like just a hair larger than two inches. Here, I'll turn it this way so you can see the two. So my pin was right here. It was just like, like a sixteenth more than two inches. So we're going to move it in a half an inch. So here's one and a half inches and I'm going to move it over just a hair so that it's you know a, a half an inch away from where it was before. I'm going to place my pin back through my tape then I'm going to put my pin back in the same pinhole as wh where it was before when we drew the the first circle and then we'll put our pencil back in here and trace this again and I like uh, when I'm doing this usually I will turn the piece of cardboard that I'm tracing onto instead of um, trying to turn this all the way around, which you can, but. So there we go. So we've got this circle here, a little thickness, um, that sort of donut shape, and we're gonna cut out the inside. So like I mentioned before, you're gonna have two circles. So one is to this outer diameter and one is to the inside here. So I'm gonna cut this and stack it right behind. Yep, it'll just barely fit. And now I can cut out my two circles together. If your cardboard is thicker, this is probably about the max I would want to cut with my craft scissors, I think. But if your cardboard is thicker, I wouldn't try cutting these two at the same time. I would just, once you trace one circle, just go over to the other piece of cardboard and trace the second circle, and then you can just cut them out separately. Okay. All right. So those look pretty good. If they're not absolutely, here I'll show you on the white, they are not absolutely perfect. They look pretty darn good, but those little tiny bumps, that's fine. It's not going to show underneath your stitching. You don't need to worry about it. So in order to cut the inside donut shape out, you got to get rid of that little inside there. You can just stab through with your scissors. Make sure you're not stabbing into yourself, just like that. 
And then instead of just cutting straight over to here and trying to make that 90 degree angle, what I do is I just get a little slit in here and then I start spiraling to the outside. So that way you're not, because if you just go straight out and try to cut that way, you're gonna rip it or bend it or something's gonna happen. It's not gonna look very good. <laughs> um, I speak from experience. So you're just gonna spiral your way over until you get to that line and then you can cut on your line all the way around. Alright, so we've reached the beginning here, trim that up just a little. Another thing you could do if you happen to have an X-Acto knife um, and a mat board or something, um, or a, a cutting mat, sorry, I said the wrong thing, um, you can do that. That'll make it a little bit easier for you to get a nice, um, a nice line. Scissors can be a little bit tricky sometimes when you're cutting through cardboard and trying to make a perfect circle. But like I said, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect to look really good. None of these were perfect circles, and you can't even tell once you stitch over it. Okay, so the next step, <coughs> oh, Jen likes my spiral technique for cutting out the center of the cardboard. Awesome. <coughs> I did a lot of cutting of cardboard and paper and things in my old job, so <laughs> I did learn a lot of little tricks like that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to spiral off um, a section of yarn, not spiral off, we're going to wind off a section of yarn, make a little, a small ball that's only about maybe an inch and a half or so in diameter. You just need a little bit of yarn that you can have in a separate, uh, a separate ball, or if you have a separate skein, you can just pull from both skeins. Um, for this very first round that we're going to do, we're going to be holding the two strands of yarn together to make it just a little bit, give us a little extra coverage because we're going to be working around this cardboard here and we want to have lots of strands of yarn covering that up. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook, just like this. And then we are going to work into this like as though it was a magic loop, OK? So if you've never done this before, this might be a little confusing at first. I know the first time I did this, I was like, I don't understand. where I, don't, I, get, I put my hook in here, but I didn't really know quite what to do. So if you hold your yarn along the top edge of your cardboard, go inside, and then you can kind of pull your hook up. So my hook is on the wrong side of the cardboard. It's going through the donut, out the back, and I'm going to grab that strand of yarn. And then I'm going to pull everything up so that it's riding at the very top of the cardboard, OK? So let me show you that one more time. So here it is on my hook. You're just going to go in there. And so this brings it across the front. And then you're going to grab the yarn. And that's going to bring it across the back. And you're going to pull everything up. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. So that's just a single crochet, and we're just making that right into that cardboard donut. That first stitch is always the hardest because it's kind of awkward to hang on to. But now it's secured, so it'll be a little bit easier. OK, so insert your hook. And I like to bring, actually bring the yarn down. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm bringing the yarn down here to catch it with my hook, and then bringing everything back up. Every time you do this, you kind of have to you know, fiddle around with it and make sure that it is up at the top edge of your cardboard, like that. Whoops, and then you also have to make sure that you're, you know, grabbing both strands of yarn held together, you're just holding them together as one. Or if you happen to have, you know, a thicker yarn could work well for this too. If you wanted to have a contrasting color around, I thought that would be really pretty to have that contrasting kind of ring and then have a different kind of color on the outside. I thought that would be kind of neat. All right, so we're just going to continue working into that ring until we have 60 stitches around. So what I like to do is, as I work around, I, I am always um, you know, at certain checkpoints. So you know when you have uh, 15 stitches that you should be a quarter of the way around your little donut because 60 stitches divided by 15 is four. So um, let me check and see where we're at right now. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like we're doing pretty well. 10, so we should be, when we're at 10, we should be a sixth of the way around our donut. 
So the reason I'm telling you to check this is because you want your stitches to be fairly evenly distributed around the donut. And it is possible if, if you're really cramming these in there at the beginning, they might be kind of looser toward the end. And you can always shift them. You can slide them with your fingers before you do the next round. Um, but I would recommend, you know, before we start doing those little points, that we should get everything kind of all situated because once you put the... Once you stiffen everything, the points are going to stay. <laughs> You're not going to be able to slide them around after you stiffen them. And you really want your points to look symmetrical. You don't want them all to be kind of shifted one way or the other. So when I was working on this project, I was thinking about, I mean, obviously Mother's Day is coming up, and I was thinking about cool Mother's Day presents that you can make. Um, and I thought, it, you know, for people who just want to remember their mother or their grandmother or someone who is special to them, they can create these little photos to put up. Um, and also, it would be a great gift, you know, for your own mom. You can give her a picture of yourself or if you have kids, she, they, you know, to give your, your mother some pictures of her grandchildren. That would be another cool, another cool project, too. Or another cool gift, I should say. All right, so we're going to check in just a little bit to see if we're, maybe we'll check when I think we're at the halfway point. We'll count up our stitches. So one thing about this is if your cardboard isn't very stiff, you know, it may have, you may be worried about it kind of bending here. So I wouldn't worry too much if you get one little bend, but that is one reason um, you just have to, double up your, bo your box board. If you really have some pretty thin box board, you can hold two rings together as one. You don't even have to glue them together. You can just kind of hold them together and stitch around them um, to create a little bit of extra stiffness there. Or you could use a plastic, a piece of plastic for this, I thought. That originally, that was my plan because um, I had these yogurt lids, these yogurt lids, um, and I thought, oh, we can make like a little ring out of plastic. But then it just seemed a little bit extra cumbersome. And I thought, oh, how many people are going to have that laying around their house and want to deal with that? So, uh, so I opted for the box board because I figured almost everybody has, you know, either buys cereal or Kleenex or something that comes in, in uh, that kind of thinner cardboard that you just end up recycling. So, OK, looks like we're a little over halfway. So I'm going to just check and make sure we're doing OK here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That looks good. We're pretty much at the halfway point. I'm going to stick a stitch marker in my 30th stitch. So that way we don't have to recount those. And we've got. One, two, three, and so we'll do 27 more. One, two, three, four, whoops. So for me, this project was it was a little bit more than just doing Mother's Day types of things for myself. I, I actually have photos here um, in the samples. They're photos of my mom. Here's my mom. This little baby here. There's my mom. And my, my mom's mom. That's my grandma. Uh, my mom taught me how to crochet, and my grandmother taught her how to crochet. And her mother is right here, and she was quite the crocheter. I remember <coughs> as a kid going to her house you know, when I was growing up and I had just learned how to crochet and I was making probably just, you know, single crochet or double crochet squares or something at the time. I, I don't know. But I remember her showing me some three dimensional things that she was making. And my mind was just blown because I, I had been learning how to sew and that, com you know, sewing is, you can obviously make three dimensional things from sewing, but you, you have to have seams and darts and things like that to create those shapes but she was just crocheting them and I just thought I remember thinking what oh my gosh you can crochet the thing 
in three dimensions. Like it just had never, I don't know, it was just a moment where I, I just remember looking at this thing she made and I thought, what? Oh my gosh, a whole door just opened up of, of possibilities there. And I, I remember going to visit her and oftentimes my mom and my great grandmother would be crocheting together and my great grandmother would teach her a stitch that she knew how to do. She taught her some different stitches for Afghans and things. <clears throat> and to me, crochet is just sort of my way of, it's a way of connecting to the past and to my relatives. So this project is kind of, um, it's a more sentimental project for me, thinking about all, how I learned how to crochet, where, where everything came from, you know, being passed down and remembering my grandma and my great grandma. And of course, my awesome mom, who is still crafts like crazy. Now she's mostly into quilt, uh, quilting, but she does lots of different crafts. All right, so let's see. Okay, so here's a 30, and we're, we're going to count up and see where we're at here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. We need seven more stitches to fit in this little space. I think we could do it. Oops, this loop got a little big. We're going to tighten that up. <coughs> One, two, oops, two, three. This is definitely the most awkward part of this whole project, so hang in there. <laughs> Four. That was kind of more of a pep talk to myself now that I think about it. And five, two more stitches. One, and here's the last one, and two. Okay, and now um, let me see. I want to see what my instructions are for joining that there. Okay, let's see. Cut the strand of yarn, connect it to the smaller ball, and then we slip stitch in the first stitch to join. So here's the strand that's connected to the smaller ball. We're gonna cut this, just leave enough uh, of a tail so you can weave it in. And we're gonna let that tail just kind of drop behind our work. So it's just hanging down there. And then we are going to insert our hook into the very first stitch Let's see, and that would be right here. And then we're going to yarn over, oops, we're just yarning over with that very first, um, or just that one strand to slip stitch it together, okay? All right, so now, Round two, is we are going to chain one that does not count as a stitch. And then, let's see, single crochet in the same stitch as the join. So we're going to single crochet right there into that very same place that we joined to. There's our first single crochet. And then we are going to chain three, skip two stitches. I'm going to actually place a stitch marker in there. I'm going to steal this one here. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so we single crochet in the same stitch of the join, then we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, skip two stitches. So we're skipping this one, this one, and then we're gonna double crochet, chain three, double crochet in the next stitch. So here's our double crochet, and chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna double crochet. And then after we do that, we're going to chain, uh, let's see, single crochet in the next chain three space. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong line right here. Oh, chain three. Yep, chain three, skip two stitches. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right, so there's the end of our double crochet. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, three, skip two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to single crochet right in that next stitch there. Okay, so basically what we're making, what we're doing all the way around is we're doing chain three, 
double crochet, chain three, double crochet, chain three, single crochet. So chain three, double crochet, chain three, double crochet, chain three, single crochet. And then we're skipping these little windows of two stitches. So let's just do that all the way around. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three, skip two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to double crochet, chain three, double crochet into the same stitch. There's our double crochet, chain three, double crochet into that same stitch. Oh, on the next one, I'll talk, I'll talk you through the double crochets because there may be some people who haven't done that before. So we're gonna do another chain three, one, two, three, and then skip two, and then a single crochet. Okay, so that's what it should be looking like. All right, let's do that again. So we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, skip two, double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, double crochet, and then chain three, one, two, three, and skip two, and single crochet. Okay, so we're just kind of making these little, little bumps in, in kind of three, you know, two side windows and one little top window, <laughs> kind of groups of three windows at a time. All right, so one, two, three, skip two, double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, double crochet, and chain two, three, skip two, single crochet here, one, two, three, skip two, we're gonna double crochet here, chain three, one, two, three, and then double crochet in the same stitch, one, two, Oh, I didn't explain my double crochet, did I? I just kept going on. All right, we'll get to, <laughs> we'll, I'll try it again. One, two, three chains, skip two, and single crochet right here. All right, chain three, one, two, three, skip two, one, two, a double crochet. So that would be a yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's a double crochet, so we'll do that again. And then we chain three, one, two, three, and do another double crochet. So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That was another double crochet. And we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, skip two, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, skip two, double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, Another double crochet into that same stitch. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two, and single crochet. So we should have a total of 10 of these when we get all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have three more left to do. So one, two, three, skip two, double crochet, one, two, three, Double crochet, chain two, three, and then skip two, single crochet, two more sets. One, two, three, here's our double, chain three, another double, chain three, one, two, three, <coughs> skip two, Single crochet, one, two, three, skip two, double, one, two, three, double crochet into the same spot, one, two, three, and then we are going to do a slip stitch in the top of the very first single crochet of the round. There's our slip stitch. All right, so we've worked through round two. That's what it should look like. And then we are going to do round three. So we slip stitch into the next chain three space. So that's right here. Then we chain one, doesn't count as a stitch. We don't count it as anything. Then we do a single crochet into the same stitch. Then we do a series of three double crochets, a chain three and three double crochets into that middle um, space. So three double crochets. So one, 
two, three, chain three, one, two, three, and then three more double crochets, one, two, three. See, so it kind of makes that little point there. And then we do a single crochet into this next chain three space here. Okay, so that's what that looks like, and we're gonna repeat that all the way around, all right? So we do a single crochet. I'm gonna call this the side box. There's one there, and there's one there. And I'm gonna call this the middle box, okay? So side, or side window, middle window, side window. So if you look at those three, how they're positioned. So we make a single crochet into the side window. Then we make three double crochets. One, two, three. And then we chain three, one, two, three, right at the center. Then we do three more double crochets. One, two, three. And then we do a single crochet into the next side window. And we're just going to keep repeating that all the way around. One, two, three, one, two, two, three, one, two, whoops, three, single crochet into the side window, single crochet into the next side window, three double crochets, one, two, three, chain three, one, two, three, Three double crochets, one, two, three. Then a single crochet into the side window, single crochet into the next one. One, two, three double crochets, chain three. One, two, three crochets <coughs> and a single crochet into the next side window all right so we would just continue working this all the way around and then we do a slip stitch over here so then you would have a piece that looks like let me see where my piece go here it is you have a piece that looks like this, okay? And then you're ready to start using your fabric stiffener to stiffen all these points. So I, even though this one isn't complete, I'm going to show you how to get the fabric stiffener onto your piece. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate with this, but just imagine it was finished. Um, so I'm going to be using the fabric stiffener that I could find. So this one works just fine. I actually used it without thinning it last time, but I felt like it would make it a little bit easier if you thinned it just a little. Um, so I'm going to squeeze out a little bit into this cup here and then add just a small amount of water to thin it down. It says, for the instructions of thinning, it says you can use up to 50% um, water to thin it. I'm not going to do that much. I'm probably only thinning it by, I don't know, maybe like a qu quarter of the amount. Um, like a quarter of however much stiffener you use, use a quarter of that amount to add the water, if that makes sense. A <laughs> it, should be, it should be one quarter to one is what I'm trying to say. And um, the one quarter is the water and the one is the fabric stiffener. All right, so it needs to be just thin enough. It's kind of like Elmer's glue consistency almost. It could be a, even a little bit thinner if you wanted it to be. Um, and then you're just basically going to be pushing it into, I know this looks really terrible, don't gasp. Because <laughs> when I first did this, I thought, well, I just ruined what I was working on. That looks terrible. Um, so you're really just kind of pushing that glue into all the little nooks and crannies of your crocheted piece. So that's why you need to have sort of a stiffer brush. And be careful, you don't want to, you don't want to get your glue or your fabric stiffener up into this part right here. You don't want it to make those stiff because you're going to be working into these stitches later. You're actually going to be crocheting some more um, after this dries. But you do want to get these little guys here, you know, the little open window part. 
and all the way up into those points. Okay, so I'm just going to do these two to kind of show you about what it should look like. And then you want to check to make sure that there isn't a big blob. Like, maybe we'll kind of get rid of some of this when I turn it over. We j it, it dries clear, but you don't want it to look shiny and gluey. You just want it to soak into your fabric. So if you have too much, there's big, you know, if there's big areas of like bright white, a glob just sitting there, you should probably mop that up a little bit. Um, but it does help to thin it out just a little bit so it can soak in a little bit more into your fabric. So you'll get all the points wet and kind of painted with this fabric stiffener. And then I just use a pin to just pull on these to make the ni a nice point. So I just pulled on them just a little to shape them all the way around the whole piece so that they were nice and pointy. And then I let it dry. So I let mine dry overnight, um, just follow the package instructions. But really, it only takes probably, I don't know, maybe like an hour or two to dry. Um, so then your piece will look like this. And then you're going to use your cardboard template that you have already cut out for the back. Let me see if these are the same. Oh, let's see. Um, OK, so you're going to use your cardboard piece for the back, and then you're going to use that to cut out your photo. But it's best to lay this down on top of your photo and figure out exactly where you want it to be, because it might not be exactly perfectly centered in your photo. Like if I centered mine, I don't know. I just I think I'd rather have it over here just a little bit. So. Um, I use my frame to try and figure out exactly where I wanted my circle to come out. So as you can see, this is not reaching all the way over to the edge of the circle, but that's fine. I'm just going to lay this down on the back and hold it together <coughs> and use that to cut out my photo. You could also trace it too if that makes it easier instead of just trying to hold them together. All right, then you're going to take your back piece, which you have, you know, you just left one working loop still hanging out there. We just set it aside and moved on to the front, remember? Um, so you're going to lay that with the right side facing the table. Then you'll put your cardboard and your photo on top of that. Then you're going to stack this so that the right side is facing, and you're just going to make a little sandwich. So you, although you can twist your photo later, if I find it best if you just um, place this working loop either at the top or the bottom of your piece so that you kind of are able to get everything oriented right. And then find one of these points and have the point go straight up from wherever you want it to be on your photo like that and just kind of hold it as a sandwich. And you can pin this together. Um, if it helps, you can pin around the edges. But I found that it was easy enough for me to just stick my crochet hook through any of these loops and place that working loop back onto my hook like that and pull it through to the front like this. Okay, so I'm just kind of holding everything in a stack. And then I'm going to just be slip stitching through the layer in the front and then through a stitch in the layer of the back. Grab that yarn. Pull it through and pull it through the loop on your hook. Okay, so you're just going to insert it through the next stitch, through the next stitch in the back as well. Grab that yarn, pull it through to the front. So basically, all we're doing here is we are just sewing the all the layers together with everything all stacked. Oh, I should mention too, before you do this, you're going to want to weave in all of your ends except for the just the one end from the that we're using. <laughs> Obviously, you can't weave that in. Um, but you're going to want to weave in everything else before you do this step. But basically, we're just seaming it together with a little slip stitch here. And I thought, too, this could be really cool in a contrasting color because you'd get just this little thin ring all the way around. Um, another thing, too, is once you get it started and you like how everything is looking, you can just remove this and not worry. And actually, you can just lay these together and start stitching and then put those in later. I just like to put it in there at the beginning just to make sure everything was situated OK and the photo was cut to the right spot and all that stuff um, before I start stitching everything together because I didn't want to put my photo in there and then be disappointed. So <clears throat> it is OK to let that kind of come back out. I forgot that I, I did that um, on my last photo frame. I just pulled everything out like I am right now. 
and it doesn't really matter, and then you can go about halfway around and stick it back in. And just make sure, so on every, for every stitch that you make, there's a stitch that lines up from the front with the stitch on the back. Okay, when you're stitching them together, there, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. There's 60, 60 stitches here and 60 stitches on the back as well. Oh, and Debbie's saying you could use these as coasters if you waterproof the photo. Yeah, you could do that. You could totally do that. Um, another thing you could do is instead of using photos, you could do something else, some, some kind of, um, you know, like a piece of wallpaper or some kind of cool collage thing in the middle. You could do some interesting multimedia art, just placing that in between your pieces <coughs> and then covering, you could cover it with a piece of plastic or something like that before you stitch everything together. So this is why you didn't want to get um, that fabric stiffener on to your, you know, into those holes or you would not really be able to insert your, your hook through very well. Although I, I did actually have a little spill on mine and I was able to push it through. I was still able to make a hole in it, um, but it was, you know, it, <laughs> it did require a little bit of elbow grease, which made me a little nervous. So. You know, just try, try not to get any fabric stiffener onto the, the area where you're going to be stitching. All right. Getting close to being halfway done, so I think I'm going to put my photo back in there. And then I will, sh I will um, show you uh, once again how I attach that little plastic piece on the back. But we are getting pretty close to the end. Oops, I better stop now so I can get my photos in there. All right, so this is where I started. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but this, it's still open here. Um, and this is where I started. I've made it about halfway around. Now I'm going to place my photo and the cardboard back inside. Just slide it in there. And now it's pretty tight, actually, so I think it's going to stay without me really having to put much effort at all into holding on to that, which is nice. I thought these could be, um, you know, like affixed to your fridge too with a magnet on the back. I thought that would be a nice, um, a nice way of displaying photos as well. So if you wanted to do something like that, you, could, you can buy magnets that have that s a sticky side, the stick on magnets. Um, and then in order to make it sticky, you can add that plastic yogurt lid, like I'm going to show you in a minute, um, to the back of it to give it to something to stick to as well. And another thing, actually, that I had thought of, if this was made in a very thin crochet thread, like in a size 10 instead of a size 3 and a s tiny hook, you could make really cool little, and, and maybe you made it in white or silver or something. I thought these would make really cool Christmas ornaments. Um, because they're, you know, you can add a little tiny picture of a Christmas from the past or something in there, um, and then you can hang it from a top point, and it looks nice on the back side too. You know, it's not like a regular photo frame. It's, it's pretty on the back too, so it's not, you know, if it's spinning around on your tree, it'll still look good, even if you see the back of it. It'll look, look kind of, it could look kind of like a snowflake if you did this in a, a white or silver or something like that. I thought it would be really pretty. Okay, we're almost all the way around, and it's looking good. Just a few more stitches, and then I will show you that plastic backing. Okay. So, and you probably notice this as I'm working on it, I'm kind of tipping it towards the back to look at the back, and I'm trying really hard with this hand not to squish the tips. They're pretty sturdy, actually, but I haven't crunched one really hard yet to see if it gets a crease in it or if it doesn't look very good. So, you know, you're going to want to be kind of careful that you're not, you know, clenching down on those little 
points just to make sure they're nice and pointy. All right, so we've made it all the way around. I'm gonna cut my yarn and pull it through. And then we would just weave it in um, and bury our tails. And you can bury your tails on, on inside of here, or you can push it toward the back and bury it back here, which is another really easy place to bury, bury your tails. Um, but I am going to just show you really quickly that lid thing. So these are what the command strips look like. Um, you certainly do not have to do this. You can use a pin or a little nail to hang them on the wall. But I use these because it seemed like an easy, um, an easy way to do it. So I just, um, let's see, one side goes to the, well, maybe they're both green. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter which side goes to the plastic. So I, you can either cut out a little rectangle of your yogurt lid, or you can just place this on your yogurt lid like this and push it down and hold on to it, you know, for 30 seconds or whatever the package instructions tell you. And then you can cut around it. And it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. It doesn't even have to be a rectangle, honestly. It could be like an oval shape. Just, you know, leave yourself a little bit of space around it so that you can punch some holes in with a hole punch and then you can just sew them to the back of your piece. So you just have to make sure this is small enough to fit on the back side here. Um, but <clears throat> it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's going to see this. Um, but you can just use a hole punch and then punch a couple of little holes around here. And like I was saying, if you were going to put a magnet on this or something, you could you know, stick the magnet on, or you could just sew this down first, just stitch it through those holes to just the back of your work. Um, and this is what it, whoops, where did it go? Here we go. This is what it looks like. There's little stitching lines at my corners just to kind of affix it. All right. Oh, and Karen is saying it's an excellent project for Mother's Day, and she's thanking me. You are welcome, Karen. I am so glad you enjoyed it. This was a really fun one for me. Um, like I said, I have some sentimental attachments to this project, but also it was just a fun, crafty kind of multimedia thing to do. You know, I would get the photos and the fabric stiffener. It's just kind of, I, you know, outside of the normal crochet project just a little bit, but I really like mixing things up a little bit, and so it was fun. I'm glad that you enjoyed it too, Karen. Um, and I'm glad all the rest of you joined me too. So I am always excited to teach new things. So if ever you guys have questions or suggestions, I love it when you put stuff in the chat box. Um, and until our next live, I'll see you and happy crocheting. Bye.